is once again, people of God, uh, saints of the Most High God, I, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. And, uh, I'm so excited about being here with you. I thank God uh, for this opportunity to, to, to be here present with you. And I uh, thank God any time and every time that we are fortunate enough to gather together in his name and, and, and to glorify and to worship him. Hallelujah. It's such a wonderful uh, experience every time we get together in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, well, two or more come together in my name. Right there am I in the midst with them. So uh, I just thank God for this this uh, this gathering of of who all will, will hear the word of God, and I thank God uh, most importantly for His presence with us. I bless Him uh, for all the kindness that He's shown us and keeping us throughout the weeks and months and years, and He just demonstrates His faithfulness every day. So I just I just want to glorify Him and and, and exalt His name and thank God for. For all you that, that, that will hear this word. So let us bow before him. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much uh, for your wonderful kindness, for your loving, for your loving, uh, 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 for your love toward us, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness. We thank you for, for keeping us, Lord God, and, 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 and just for preserving our souls. And bringing us uh, before your presence as it is this day. Father, we welcome your presence in the midst of us. And we pray, we sanctify ourselves before you, Lord God. And pray that you will sanctify this space and this time. Sanctify both our hearts, our minds, our souls within us, our spirits. Uh, and prepare us that we may hear a word from you, O oh Lord. And that you will give us clarity, that you will give us uh, uh, quicken our understanding, give us a living understanding, Lord God, that we may receive your engrafted word, and that this word may be guidance to our life. And Father, we just thank you so much uh, for this word and for all you've done and all you are yet to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So, people of God, let's turn to the book of St. John, chapter 20. And I have a few verses that I want to, to read before you and share what the Spirit of the Lord will say unto us. Uh, I don't want to be before you long, but I, I can't put a time on the Spirit of God uh, we're going to let him uh, speak to us and see what he has to say about the time and, the, and everything else. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So St. John chapter 20, let's read verses 24 through 29. Amen. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. 
blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. I want to talk to you about destroying the spirit of unbelief. Destroying the spirit of unbelief. We have to destroy any residue, any shadow of unbelief if we want to live successfully this, this life of faith. And if we want to do, uh, as I often pray, always those things that are pleasing in the sight of God, to accomplish this, we have to destroy the spirit of unbelief. We have to go to war. We, we, we have to be determined that we're going to have a faith that believe God and not going to accept no for an answer. Not going to accept any other thing other than what thus saith the Spirit of the Lord. Now Jesus talked to Thomas because he understood. He knew that when he uh, uh, well, let me let's go back when 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 Jesus first came and appeared to his disciples. This was the day of his resurrection. That night at the evening, uh, he rose. On, on that Sunday morning, uh, rose from the dead after being in the grave for three days. He rose from the dead and, and, and appeared that night at evening. Uh, in the Bible say, he came when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled together for fear of the Jews. But Thomas wasn't with them at this time and jesus came and stood and said peace be unto you hallelujah it's some about when the lord show up the first thing he say the first thing he bring with him is peace his presence invokes peace he is the prince of peace and so when he show up in the midst of your fears the first thing he said peace be unto you when he had so said, he shewed unto him his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21, I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm, I'm in verse 21 of John chapter 20. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. And so Thomas, not being present at this first appearance of the Lord, the disciples, the disciples, excuse me, uh, uh, enthusiastically, when they when they saw Thomas, when he came back uh, to be gathered with them again, they said, "Thomas, we saw the Lord. He has appeared unto us, and, and we talked with him. We have touched him. We ate with him." Thomas said, "Except I see." The nail prints, except I touch him, except I put my hand into the piercing in his side, I will not believe. And, and to some people, they can they can understand Thomas' doubt. They can understand his unbelief. Uh, you talking about a man that has risen from the dead after after being in the grave three days. You said that you see him. You saying that you have seen him, that you talked to him, that you touched him. I won't I won't believe unless I see him. Well, see, with some of us, that may fly. That that may be a a, a reason or a good excuse. But with Jesus, that that he had spent three years with them, and so this wasn't flying with him. He had taught them for these three years how to walk before God uh, in faith, 
His whole purpose for coming and choosing these 12 was to teach them and to leave a legacy to lead uh, through these 12 the doorway, the, the opening, the teaching, uh, the teaching to train disciples, people that will be faithful and, and believe in God and, and, and living by faith. He come to usher in a new dispensation. And so he had trained these 12 for three years. He walked with them and showed them how to walk before God by the spirit of faith. Taught them that that you have to believe and you have you can't have a shadow of a doubt. You can't have the spirit of doubt in any of you. And so how is it that, that Thomas still have this unbelief in him? Uh, he hadn't he had not been converted yet. Okay? So so he he Jesus said, listen, Thomas, you believe me now because you have seen me. You believe me uh, because you have held me. You need the evidence to believe me, but this is not the thing that's going to be uh, pleasing in the sight of the Father. You, you can't get there this way. You have to have a spirit that, that whatever the spirit of the Lord says, you just believe, asking no question. That's, that's what true faith is. True faith speaking on this wise, saying that when God speak a word to me, I, I, I'm just going to believe him. And then the rest can fall in place where it will. That's the thing that pleased God. Abraham had this spirit in him. The Bible said God told Abraham to tell the stars if you can if you can number them. Count them if you can. That's how many children you're gonna have. He spoke that to him when he had no children. And the Bible said Abraham believed God. He just looked at the stars, didn't even try to count them. Didn't even try to figure out, God, how are you going to do this? And how how am I going to know that I'm going to have this? He, the Bible said Abraham believed God. And that's the only thing that God is requiring of us. To only believe. Just believe him. Believe in his trust in in God, trusting that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think. How is this possible according to the power that worketh in us? So he has given us his spirit. His spirit is the spirit of faith. His spirit. He has shared it with us. He has, he has departed. He has, he has given it unto us. Distributed amongst us. And, 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 and placed in us his own spirit. The same spirit by which he spoke in the beginning. When he created the heavens and the earth. God was speaking by faith. Knowing that whatsoever he said would come to pass. Because he knew who he is. He know that he is the almighty God and he required us to have that spirit in us to believe just because you said it Lord I need no evidence just because you said it I believe it hallelujah still with some of, some of us we ask the question, oh, some things are just harder to believe. Some things, you know, it's, it's a challenge for us to believe. But I heard the Spirit of the Lord say it. I heard Jesus himself say it. When he stood before these Pharisees, when he stood before them, and, and, and he, he, he healed the man, they brought a man that was crippled. They were sick of the palsy. He was laying on his bed. And they were standing there watching him. Jesus said, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. 
Hey, and I know he said that intentionally, just to grab their attention, just to show them that he, as the Son of God, has power to forgive sin. Amen. Gee, Jesus, Jesus, I, I think he said it like that just because he knew the intents of their heart. Uh, let, let's go to that in, in Matthew. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 9 just for a minute. I want to show you something uh, about this. Matthew chapter 9, verse 1 through, let's just read, well, verse 2. Verse 2, and behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on the bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. There it is. Son, be of good cheer. In other words, peace be unto you. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, they said it in their hearts, this man blasphemed. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? I see your thoughts. I know what you are thinking. And, and, and I said it just for that purpose. I said it to expose your, your heart. For whether it's easier to say, which is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go to, unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And so Jesus, he said it just like that, just to let them know that while you doubting me, while you questioning me and tempting me, I came to show you. I came to demonstrate the power of the Son of Man on earth. The power of the Son of God, not only uh, uh, to forgive sins, but to heal the sick. And what God is saying to us, he's saying, which is easier? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or, or, or to say rise up, take up your bed and walk? And I think that was like a hypothetical question because uh, uh, it's, it's as easy as <sighs> exhaling. It's, it's as easy as taking the next breath. And I think that faith is that way. When we, when we hear a word from God, it's just as easy as breathing to believe God. So, so when people say, you know, some things are hard to believe, some things are challenging, it's when we get in our own minds and when we try to figure things out. That's when things become hard because our minds are finite. We have infinite. I mean, we don't have infinite. <laughs> Excuse me. We do not have uh, infinite understanding. We're only limited in what we can understand. And God is sitting on the outside. Finite. Excuse me, y'all. I'm getting confused. God is standing on the on the outside, and he, he he is infinite. We have finite, limited uh, understanding, and God does not. God God is saying, listen, nothing is impossible to me. Nothing is hard for me. Nothing is a challenge for me. If I can get you to understand that I am God, the Creator that created the heavens and the earth, that, that just spoke word, that just exhaled and, and breathed out words. 
you know that your faith is just as easy as breathing. If, if I speak a word to you, all I need for you is just to say, yes, Lord. Like Abraham believed in his heart. God is saying, if my people could just believe in their heart without trying to figure it out, without trying to reason among themselves, if you could just trust me that I am God and that I spoke to you and that I, that I presented you with this opportunity. Faith, faith is simple. Faith is as easy as believing. Just, just believe. No effort at all. We don't even have to think about the next breath we take. When we were created, God created us in, in our respiratory system automatic works without us even thinking about it without us trying to inhale and exhale so god is saying just believe thomas had to have evidence he had to, to touch him and i have to see him before but jesus said to martha mary said to martha when, when she came and talked to him about Lazarus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, your brother will live again. Don't, don't worry. Take, take me to it. Lord, Lord, I know he's going to live again in the last day at the resurrection. Jesus said, hey, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Take me to him. When he get to the grave, she said, he said, roll away the stone. She said, Lord, by this time he's thinking. Jesus says, did I not say unto you, Martha, that if you can believe, you will see the glory of God? I was just telling you that I am the resurrection. I am the life. Though you went, though he is dead, he's going to live again. I told you, I'm, I'm here to bring him up. I am the resurrection. So if we can get our mind, if we can get our understanding, just go ahead and blow your mind, your thoughts. Just, just, just get them out of there. We can't come to God. With understanding that that's dead. That's what what born again is all about. It's talking about being born of water and born of the spirit, so that we can no longer be bound by our thoughts, no longer be bound by by our way of, of, of dealing with life. We might as well give it up anyway because we're not getting anywhere with what we're doing. We're not accomplishing anything by our thoughts and trying to figure things out. But I'm coming. I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about a living way, about the way of faith and, and trusting God. Jesus said, you must be born again, or you will not see the kingdom of God. And that's all he come to preach, the kingdom of God. He came, when he came, he, he preached one message, just like John the Baptist. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came behind John saying, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent means to turn, means to, to turn from that way. It means to, to, to denounce every way that you have lived, every thought that you have thought. For it's trying to reason God out. Or figure out situations or problems, how to handle them. He said, just give that to me. Don't, don't worry about it. Give it to me. And then trust me. So our faith is, is, is 
is accounted to is, is tied together with our ability to trust God to be who he said he is. And that takes a faith that we don't possess. We don't have that. We have to be born again, born of water. We have to be born of the Spirit. When Jesus spoke to his disciples, he, he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And breathing on him, he imparted unto them his Spirit. And then they received power to be witnesses unto him. If then they received power to believe him. But Thomas didn't receive that power because he was absent that day. But when Jesus came back eight days later on the next Sunday, on the, on the next, on the following Sunday, he appeared the same way the door was being shut, walked through the midst of them, walked through the door and into the midst of them. It said the same word, peace be unto you. And immediately began speaking to Thomas. Reach hither thy finger. Reach hither thy hand. Thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believe it. Now we rag on Thomas, call him Doubting Thomas. But Thomas wasn't born again. So what's our excuse? We said that we were born again. We said that we are the saints of the Most High, God. We said that we have received His Spirit. Why is it hard for us to believe? Thomas hadn't been converted. And that's the difference. That's the difference, people of God. We have to be converted. We have to be born of water, born of the Spirit, before we can live. We, we, can't, we can't live by faith in our flesh, living in the flesh. We can't live by faith and by the Spirit of God, walking in the natural realm. It's, it's impossible. The flesh cannot receive the stings of the spirit. The flesh has to be crucified. That's why Jesus said it. Whoever come to me, you must die daily. And if you do not, you're not worthy of me. And what he's saying, he's, he's saying, you don't, you're trying to do it without me and you can't. You cannot do it. It's impossible. So when people say that some things are hard, it, it's just hard to believe. It's hard because you're in the flesh. You're in the flesh. You're trying to reason it in your finite mind. And I'm not trying to bash on you. I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to show you that what what the spirit of the Lord is saying that that you it's impossible for you to live by faith living in the flesh. It's impossible for you to live believing God and still walking by the flesh. You have to destroy that spirit of unbelief. With your flesh, every day it has to be crucified. Every day it has to be put on the altar. Because it's going to rise up. The flesh don't want to stay crucified. The Bible said the spirit war against the flesh. And the flesh war against the spirit. And these two are at enmity. One against the other. Enmity meaning hostility. Hatred. War. They are at war with one another. And so we have to have a determination in our spirit, allowing the spirit of God to live through us, to crucify 
and we are the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the reasonings of the flesh, and of the mind. Paul, when he was uh, writing to the Corinthians, he wrote, he wrote this. He said, I beseech you that I may not be bold when I'm present with you, with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some. Because they're thinking of us as if we walked according to the flesh. See, they talking about us saying that we think we somebody, saying that we think we holier than thou. And, and, and when people talking about like this, that, let, that, that, that conversation is letting you know that they're in their flesh. And we're having jealousies and, 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 and all kinds of stuff like they're dealing with the flesh, talking about people and, and comparing ourselves to people. You're not in the spirit. You are in the flesh. And Paul's saying, listen, I'm beseeching you. I, I'm praying you. I don't want to be bold against you like I'm thinking that I, I need to be. When I come to you, I want to come to you in love and in the spirit of meekness as brethren. I want to come fellowshipping with you. But if there's some there, if they're going to hold it in their heart, they, they're talking that they're doing, as though we're walking in the flesh, as though we're walking as men pleasers. As we're walking, doing this to pump ourselves up, to make ourselves something before you. He said, listen, if you're thinking like, he said, but though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So don't get it twisted. We, we, we walking and we living in these physical bodies. But we've learned how to let God, how to let the Spirit of God crucify the will of our flesh. And we're not walking as mere men as some think. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't, do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And that's the key. Through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it to captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. And this is how you destroy it. Having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. See, when I'm walking according to the word and the will of God, I'm, I'm bringing revenge on every act of disobedience, of every act of the flesh. When my obedience is fulfilled, when I, when I surrender myself to the will of God, I destroy that spirit of unbelief and all those doubts and all those questions that my mind and that, that my flesh is bringing before me to cause me to doubt God. And when you're doing this, you're walking in a power that is beyond you now. Okay? And so that's when you become dangerous to the enemy. And that's when you become dangerous to the spirit of darkness. And all those that are subject to that spirit. Paul said, now, I don't want to come to you in a bold way. I, I would rather be meek and humble and come in the spirit of love. But if I have to be bold, I can use sharpness against you. I can show you better than I can tell you. And this ain't a pride thing. He's talking. He's talking when, this, when the spirit of, of God, when we allow the spirit of God to move in us, there's a power in us. Yeah. The power of the almighty that is, that is beyond any man. 
all people in the world can be against you if they want to. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory be to God. The whole world can be against you, but if you just got God only on your side, and he says, stand firm on what I'm saying. Stand still. Don't move. You are more than a conqueror. Your obedience to him. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to get them back. You don't have to tell them a piece of your mind. You don't have to do anything. Paul was writing out of the spirit of love. Listen, I don't want to come to you in sharpness. I don't want to come rebuking you. I don't want to come proving to you the power of God that is in me. But as brother, and I, I love you. But I have to do what God say do. And so for us to be pleasing in God's sight, for us to be uh, 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 successful, walking the walk of faith, we have to be obedient to the word of God. And we have to believe, asking no questions. We have to have that blind faith, not knowing what God is going to do, not knowing how he's going to bring it to pass, but knowing that he's going to do exactly what he told us to do. So if he said, do this, do that. Whatever he said, like Mary, when he was at that wedding, they didn't have any more wine. They come tell Jesus, Jesus, Mary herself. His mother. They have no more wine. He said, woman, what have that to do with me? My time has not yet come. Mary just simply said, by faith. Now, not even considering. Not, she didn't get her feelings hurt when he said, woman, what has thou to do with me? She just turned to the disciples. She turned to the people in the wedding, and she said, whatever he say, do it. Whatever he say to you, just do that. I mean, it, it, it was that easy. We know the story. He told them, Phil, give me some water pots. They got a water pot. He said, fill them up with water, all of them. They fill them with water. He said, now draw out and take it to the master of the ceremony. Take it to the governor of the feast. Go give them the drink out of that. Hallelujah. And we know the outcome of that. He turned the water into wine. His first miracle. But that simple obedience. Without questioning him, Mary said the tone, whatever he said, just do it. Abraham had shoulders years before. Abraham believed God. Just believe. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you tonight, just believe. And watch the spirit of unbelief be destroyed in your life. And watch how the spirit of God begin to move in your life. You will see the miracles that, that people say the days of miracles are not are, are past. That, that, that stuff don't happen anymore. They're giving the, they the testimony to where they are at in their faith. Because God... I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> God has a change. His abilities have not diminished. Hallelujah. The power that he demonstrated in Moses, uh, on Pharaoh and uh, on all that Moses' life and everybody that is, that, is, that is in the Bible that we read about their faith. 
we see all the power and the demonstration of, of, of the Spirit of God, how He moved and how He acted. God said, I'm still the same. I have not changed. He said, my people have not believed me. So I haven't been able to demonstrate. We have all kind of little sort of ways that we're not, sometimes we're not even aware of our reasonings in our flesh, our reasonings of our, of our mind that cause us to doubt, that cause us to fall into unbelief. Thomas spoke he out. He had, he had to see. He had to touch him. And that was the only way he was going to believe. But we reason in our mind. Man, what if, what if, what if, you know, you know, what if God didn't say that to you? What if God didn't tell you that? What if, what if I do that and then nothing happens? Just that right there. God can't work with that. Only thing he can deal with is belief, is, is the spirit of faith. When we reason and we 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 limp, we we cancel God out. Uh oh, God God see unbelief. He uh, he he turns from it because he can't mingle with that. He can't mix with that. He can't work with that. And so we we do it we do it when we fall out of trust. When we fall out of the spirit. When we allow our flesh to rise up and begin to question. And that's just warfare what Paul is talking about. We got to cast down these imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Against the knowledge of God. Casting it down. Casting it down. We have to read the word of God, receive the word of God, and believe it, and, and, and accept no other thing than what God said. Accept no other word. I don't care who it is trying to talk to you and tell you, well, you know, uh, uh, if, if I were you, I, I would do that. Now, you got to be careful now. That's fear and that's unbelief. And those are two enemies of the Spirit of God. And as soon as you detect them, you ought to reject them. As soon as you even feel like it, you begin to rebuke that thing immediately. And if you have to fall on your face before God and begin to pray, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I'm under attack. I'm having trouble believing. Help me, Lord. Do whatever you need to do. But you got to train yourself to surrender to God. And to surrender your spirit. Lord, help me. I, I can't do this. I, I feel fear coming in. I, I feel reasoning trying to take over my mind. Lord, help me now. I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I pray for your people. I pray for us, Lord God, for all of us that, that we surrender ourselves to your spirit, Lord God, and allow your spirit to so move on us. That we were so surrendered to your spirit, Lord God, that, that you may have your way in our life. And that you may just demonstrate in us all that you are willing to do through us, Lord God, according to the power that you have already placed in us. According to your spirit. Father, I pray of meekness, Lord God. I pray uh, uh, that, that your power just flow freely. That you do Whatever you are desiring to do in our lives, to show us, Lord God, to show us that you are God and you alone, you are God all by yourself, Lord God. And if we can surrender ourselves 
uh, to the moving of your spirit, if we can be sensitive to the moving of your spirit, Lord God, that you can, that you will show us your power, and that you would uh, 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 cast down all these uh, heresies, all these hearsay, all of these uh, these lies, all of the whole the, the spirit of unbelief that it may be destroyed out of our life, Lord God, that we indeed may live and walk and do all those things that are pleasing in your sight. Because that's the only thing that your spirit is tolerant of is 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 believing, surrendering to you. And Father, we don't want to wrestle with your spirit. We don't want to resist your spirit. Not a day farther, Lord God. But the total surrenderance, we surrender unto you. Hey, in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for every every soul that hear this message. That they may know that you are God. That they may know, Lord God, that our obedience brings revenge on every act of disobedience. Of every act of unbelief, that when we obey you, Lord God, hallelujah, we remove from us that spirit, hallelujah, and cast judgment on it and condemn it, that spirit of unbelief, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word, Lord God, and I just pray even as, as, as we continue before you, that you continue to manifest your glory, that you continue to to reveal unto us the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus, the simplicity of the walk of faith, how easy it is just to believe you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not a complicated thing, but how easy like taking our next breath. And Father, I thank you. I thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. I thank you for the spirit of faith that you have imparted unto us to just believe, to just be obedient unto your every word, exactly how you said do it, or exactly when you say do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father, we just love you so much. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.